This episode of the Joe Rogan Experience podcast was one of the episodes uh, that we made while we were filming the sci-fi show, Joe Rogan Questions Everything. So what we did when we did that show, if you've never uh, seen or heard of it, we had a podcast on the show, and a lot of people thought it was a fake podcast, but it was actually a real podcast. And thanks to the generosity of the Sci-Fi Channel, we are now able to release it as a podcast. So uh, thank you to Tim and Wayne uh, from Sci-Fi and uh, to uh, Michael and Frank from uh, Arthur Smith that um, produced the show. Thanks also to Todd, who was the director of the show. We had a great time doing it, and I uh, appreciate it very much, and appreciate you guys letting me do this like that, like the way we did it. I think it was uh, it was really fun to do it this way. We did it exactly like a regular podcast, just me and Duncan, and in this episode, we went over what's called uh, biohacking, or um, what, what I call dorks with knives sticking things under their skin. Fascinating subject, and uh, I think you'll enjoy the shit out of it. This episode is brought to you by Legal Zoom. Legal Zoom is uh, one of the sponsors that we have, where we have actually many people that are connected to the show have used it. Uh, On it was formulated through uh, Legal Zoom. Brian uh, made uh, his company an LLC through Legal Zoom. It's a way you can do things online where you can get legal papers filed and do things without actually having to go to an attorney and sit down and you know pay for an office visit and pay exorbitant amounts of money to an attorney and also you have to schedule shit and drive and all that jazz you can use legal zoom naked you could be naked nobody nobody could stop you you know you could make it a point to only use legal zoom when you're naked it won't have any benefit or any detriment to the actual legal legality of the papers that you that you make. Like, what kind of stuff can you do? Well, here's one. You can incorporate or form an LLC at LegalZoom.com starting at just 99 bucks. That's really easy. They can help out with trademarks, copyrights, patents. If you've got a great idea and you want to protect it. If you have a family, you can make a will. You can make a, a legal will for just 69 bucks. You can also get living trust, power of attorney, and more. In the past 12 years, over 2 million Americans have used LegalZoom, and they've saved a shitload of money. Now, you get a special discount from listening to this podcast. Make sure you enter Rogan in the referral box at checkout for more savings. LegalZoom is not a law firm. They provide self-help services at your specific direction, and If everything spirals out of control and you're in a panic, they actually can connect you with an independent attorney if you need additional guidance. So check out LegalZoom.com and see how they can help you today. Use the code ROGAN in the referral box. And now, without any further ado, um, the podcast that we did on biohacking with Duncan Trussell and me. All right. Joe Rogan Podcast, check it out. The Joe Rogan Experience. Train by day, Joe Rogan Podcast by night, all day. You know what's really crazy? That your your mom, after that, um, one of your stepdads was gay. Mm-hmm. Isn't that like an interesting sort of a, a, a snap back from that? You know, like, she was probably around this crazy guy with guns. It's like, get the fuck, give me a gay right. guy. Yes. I'll take it. Yeah, That's right. what my mom did. My dad was, like, this really violent cop, and she married a hippie. Like, when she broke up with him, my stepfather had long hair until I was, like, 15 years old. He had, like, a ponytail. He was a total, complete hippie. Crazy. Stoner, architect, you know. Yeah. Yeah, well, he Snap want, back. you don't want to date Hunter S. Thompson. You don't want to be around that. <laughs> was that your dad, Hunter S. Thompson, sh- shooting shit? Yeah, still is. <laughs> he is. He's, is he still traveling around in a, 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 like a, RV? a RV just seeing the world? Yeah, he, well, now he's just, no, now he's like local in Alabama, but he like goes hunting deer still. And he like, I, I told you the fist fight thing, right? No. My, this is the weirdest thing. My, I was getting a ride. This is a quick story. I was getting a ride back from college with my friend Sean. Are you recording all this? Yeah. Okay. My friend Sean is driving back to uh, was it was driving to um, a Mobile where his dad lived. And on the way back, I'm riding with with this guy, and he's like, "Oh, dude, I forgot to ask. I want to ask you this: Is your dad's name Julian?" And I'm like, "Yeah, Julian Trussell." He's like, "Your dad assaulted my dad in a bar." <laughs> 
<laughs> my dad, my dad beat up my friend's dad from in college. <laughs> when did this happen? This was I don't we, the the assault happened. Year, I think before me and this guy were in college together. But if you look at the <laughs> probability of getting a ride back from college with a guy who was a mo- mobile, the probability of your dad having beaten his dad up, it's so slim. It's so slim that like my – what are the odds that my – that we both go to this liberal arts college of 500 students and the one other guy from Mobile, Alabama, his father had been assaulted by my father in a bar? Those are pretty small odds minuscule odds it's pretty funny too that it would be your dad too because you're like the opposite like i could never imagine you just assaulting someone even if somebody got really mad at you you'd be like all right well fuck you man and you just like get out of there like yeah. the idea of you assaulting someone is b- beyond comprehension so the idea of your dad being this fucking hollow tooth bullet carrying <laughs> savage beating the fuck out of your friend's dad yeah, getting arrested Jesus Christ. He got arrested in the parking lot. Two <laughs> cops took him down, and he got arrested. <laughs> My dad came home from high school once with a black eye. Him and his uh, his uh, co-worker, they were doing a business together, and the business started going bad, and they got in a fucking fist fight. And he came home, and I remember looking at him. You know, I was like 16 or 17 or something like that, and a black eye. I was like, what the fuck, man? Are you done with this like yeah. you're still duking it out at, yeah you know 40 whatever the hell he old he was back then well it's a classic it's a classic it's a classic man it's weird a classic man <laughs> fought like it was like like think of Hemingway that's what's just part of being a man is like you would get in some inevitable fist fight and in those days it seems like you don't get in a fist fight and there's lawsuits and legal stuff it's just like the other guy accepts getting his ass kicked you're the victor and that's it or you get your ass kicked and you forget about it that seems like the old way it is now if you get in a fist fight you end up in you know serious legal trouble you get an instant lawsuit but it was it used to just be like when you see elk smashing into each other in the wilderness that's what it used to be being a man you just run into a guy and just start punching each other and then (laughs) that was it (laughs) <laughs> Those were the days back in the good old days before writing shit down. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> once, once, once people had a few mistakes and started writing shit down, they were like, "Oh yeah, okay." Yeah, blame it on Hammurabi. Yeah, it's all keep... Hammurabi's fault. And that gentleman is his name is Sharid, 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 and Lucas, and they're from uh, Grindhouse Wetware. And Grindhouse Wetware, first of all, greatest name for a company Amazing. <laughs> ever. What does that mean? Uh, so it comes from the name uh, Grinders. That's what Get we real are. close to that. Uh, that's Thanks. what we are. We're Grinders. Uh, grinders are kind of like uh, what happens when you mix open source hackers and body modification with a dash of transhumanism. Uh, and Wetware's uh, is this, you know, your body. So we're literally <laughs> grinding our biology. Uh, there's, there's all these interesting uh, little names that you guys have for yourselves. <laughs> well, first of all, grinders. We're grinders. We're transhumanists. Where there's a, a lot of uh, self-defining going on there. Well, it's not exactly that we're self-defining. We're just guys who we really like technology, and we all grew up with like you talk about growing up with Hemingway and classic men and. We were all about fighting. We grew up we – were, we were protected and sheltered and grew up with Star Wars and grew up with <laughs> these stories about robots that could think and people that couldn't live any longer and had to augment themselves and cyborgs. And, well, cyborgs were really cool. We thought they were really cool. And, uh, you know, I was in my uh, 20s when we hit the year 2000. First thing that happened, New Year's Eve, 2000, and – after I got over the shock of nothing hitting the wall, nothing falling out of the sky, I turned to my brother and went, where is my fucking jetpack? And that kind of summed it up. I felt that way. Um, my buddies felt that way. I didn't realize it, but there were a lot of people who <coughs> felt that way. And uh, we were all broke, and we didn't know much about science. And um, somewhere along the line, like I guess in 2006, there was a kid in Arizona – who realized that he could start stimulating his nerves with magnets, with magnetic implants. He uh, went to a body mod guy and got an implant done in his fingers. It started going from him to a guy in Europe. 
And then, like, 2008, there was a, a Lady Quinn Norton um, who wrote for Wired and wrote for some other, other places, and she did it. She went out and said it was a bad idea. Don't do it. Um, other people started doing it. Um, okay, so well, let's, let's back up. First of all, explain what you're talking about. You're talking about biohacking. You're talking about doing something to your body that enhances it, in, integrating and incorporating technology into your body. And the first guy was the guy in Phoenix that did the, the – Arizona, rather. Was it Arizona? Was it Phoenix, Arizona? Yeah. 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 That did the magnets in his fingers? Yeah. yeah. As far as we know, that's the first He's the person. pioneer? First, as far as first document. And what, what benefit is there of having magnets in your fingers? Like what, what did that accomplish for him um, besides making it easier to put your hand on a refrigerator? <laughs> <laughs> easier? I think food. it's annoying. It would be an annoying moment. You, you're always getting stuck to things. Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't exactly work like that. These are really tiny magnets. So you I've have got, magnets in your fingers. Yeah, yeah. I got like, uh, got one around there, one around there. Wow. So. So you implanted magnets in in your fingers? Yeah. Why did you do that? Uh, I was drunk. No kidding, <laughs> kidding. Um, I uh, found out about this. I was really interested in everything we've been talking about. I ran into a childhood friend of mine who mm -hmm. uh, got it done last year, and when he showed me what he was doing with it, I had to do it. What was he doing with it? Um, it gives you the ability, when you implant a magnet in a nerve-dense area of your hand, when you are around an electromagnetic field, um, that magnet vibrates, and so you can feel that. Now, there's a property of our brains called neuroplasticity. Uh, when you provide a stimulus over a course of time, uh, like about six months, your brain starts adapting to it. It starts building something new. And uh, I was always fascinated, even as a child, of uh, the idea of having an extra sense. Not necessarily like ESP, but just an extra sense or be right. able to hear a sound that no one's ever heard before or see a color no one ever seen before all those stories from uh, don't do drug pamphlets that are like i can see the music i can taste sound that sounded amazing to me so when i heard about this extra sense i jumped at this chance to incorporate that in my body but what extra sense the extra sense of using these magnets to detect an electrical field or to vibrate during an electrical field is that what you're saying yeah, yeah. and what how do you define an electrical field um it's power an, station. It's an electromagnetic field. So anytime right. that an electron travels in a straight line, uh, you have a magnetic field that's coming out kind of in a circle around it. Okay, it radiates around it. Right. Um, if you have a coil, a coil of uh, wire and electrons going through a coil, there'll be a kind of like a donut-shaped magnetic field around it. So those sort of fields, they have property of uh, volume. And a property of frequency. They vibrate at a certain, certain frequency, and they're loud or soft. Like a transformer, like an electrical transformer oh, outside yeah. of a building that hums? Absolutely. So if you were near that with your fingers having the magnets in them, what would happen to you? Um, I can feel those. Sometimes uh, when people would ask me at the beginning what it was like to feel this stuff, I would describe it like an effers effervescent feeling like bubbles it felt like bubbles <laughs> and it was really interesting to me it felt like bubbles yeah like how does that work um well that's the weirdest explanation for something that, or description of, oh it felt like bubbles it, yeah i don't even know you what mean to say it felt Every, like fizz yeah kind of like fizz like, like pop tarts sea like pop rocks rather sea foam i think is what he means I don't know. Um, froth, like dog froth. <laughs> Every person that has the implant uses completely different language yeah, to describe it. Yeah, it's been really fascinating to run into other people with implants and talk about this stuff because we are describing the same phenomena, and it's like you're asking me to describe a color that you've never seen before. How am right. I going to describe squant? Uh, it's squant. Well, is that blue? No, it's squant. Is it purple? Uh, no, it's like uh, tasting an orange. Oh, so it's orange. No. Is there, it's any, <laughs> is there any negative repercussions to having these magnets installed in your body? Um, well, the first time that someone actually said something that made sense as uh, far as a negative thing, I saw a speech by Quinn Norton where she said, hey, don't do this. This is a bad idea. Um, hers shattered. What shattered? Her magnetic uh, implant. Shattered. Shattered. Okay, so when uh, a magnet receives either a lot of heat or a very strong force, uh, it loses its magnetic pull. 
But more importantly, these magnets are made out of rare earth elements. Mine's like a cobalt uh, alloy. Those things aren't really healthy to take inside your body if it shatters. So this is perylene coated. Some people use silicone. Um, crazier people use hot glue. Um, Jesus. And so it's essentially <laughs> it's, it's poison. You're, you're dealing with a toxic yeah. element in so your body. When if it, it's not covered. When it's, it, not if covered. it's not covered. When it burst in, in her, she actually consulted a doctor. And the doctor was like, well, here's the thing. We could go through all the trouble of pulling it out, but it's so tiny and it's so little that's really not going to bother you. And so they left it in. And over the course of time, that magnet pulled itself back together. She never got the sense back, but it pulled itself back together. Ew, it's and alive. it didn't harm her. Ah. <laughs> Creepy little creature. <laughs> if you guys are interested. Moving around inside of her fingers. How'd she break it? What'd she slap a cop car or something? How, would you, how did she shatter She the didn't magnet? say. Furious masturbation. I have no idea. <laughs> Just furious. Yeah. Possessed. Eyes rolled back. One shoe <laughs> on. Screaming like a, like a tiger caught in a barbed wire fence. Hopefully it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Clank. Yeah, it could be. Could very well be. Happened, if I had to guess. But that usually doesn't happen with with the magnets this size. Or I something. don't have a vagina, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> How could you know what would happen when a woman's in the middle of a furious masturbation session, <laughs> completely and her on a thick fucking half a pound of meth, <laughs> just <laughs> slamming it home? You never know. Are you asking <laughs> how can we imagine what happens? Yeah, how else magnet- does a magnet get shattered? That's just as good a guess as any. Yeah, like maybe her orgasm was so strong it admitted a magnetic field. <laughs> Messed shat- up, horny as fuck, maybe on top of an old truck. <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> I'm just coming up with a scenario. How do you? Sh- th- these are under you- these are under your fingers. No, that's <laughs> that's a lot larger. But if you guys are Whoa, curious that's about a cock magnet. Sunk. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So dudes, something for your cock. That's that's a need, need for not, you know just in a cleaner way of expressing this question. Um, <laughs> are there any uh, gentlemen perhaps that uh, have these magnets put in their nether regions? I have no idea. I, think, I don't know. I think so. It's been spoken about. It's been spoken. It's been spoken about. Has it's it been, been spoken or has it been written on our website somewhere? Uh, it's been spoken about, and, mm. and usually, the closer you can get that to your face, uh, seriously, sorry. the better. Usually, Just pull it right up to your face. Usually, uh, or move your chair a little. Yeah, bit. when it comes to stuff like that, uh, people talk about it, and right. then and then don't do it. Uh, oh, so they're saying, "Hey, man, I've been thinking about putting magnets in my cock." Just so you start thinking about their cock. Well, Is that what they're doing? <laughs> That's what they're doing. It's, and and then you're forced. Hey, you know, Mike, he's going to put magnets in his cock. I'm like, why are we sitting around talking about Mike's cock? There's a lot of shit to talk about in the world. Well, Mike tricked us. Mike brought up putting magnets in his cock. He knows how to reach you guys. But, okay? It's, you can't just talk about sex. That's too easy. No, he has to talk about what, what do you guys like. You guys like putting magnets in your body. So he starts talking about magnets in his cock. But people already do that with, like... <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I'm saying it totally serious. This is I figured it out. I'm I'm like Kojak or some shit. <laughs> but uh, people already do that with body modification. You know, they yeah, they do get right. Stuff pierced. I've seen allegedly seen some stuff online of uh, just horrible ideas. You know that someone followed through with, with horrible their, their like junk. the guy who splits his cock oh, in half. The guy. <laughs> it's, like, it's only one guy. That's like saying Bigfoot's only one thing. There's a lot of Bigfoot. You're saying more than one guy's flayed oh, his yeah, cock a lot in half? Yeah. yeah. Why really, do you do yeah. that? Super common. Why do you do that? It's supposed to feel phenomenal. It's supposed to. Doesn't it fall apart when you're having sex? It's like sex? a hot dog that's been sliced and thrown on a grill. I uh, hear really that like. it's kind of like shooting like a shotgun. Oh, Stan Jesus Hope says that. Christ. <laughs> wow. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I, I think you guys I are, think you cut your dick and then you just tell everybody it's awesome. You don't want to admit you're an idiot. <laughs> Is this like when they told me like... We were going to have a punch yourself in the face contest, and I had to start first. Exactly. Uh, okay. Exactly. But it's preposterous. You, you guys are, are, in a way, what you're doing is you are turning yourself into a lab rat with the intention of gaining a kind of low level superpower, like a, a really, really low, on the scale of superpowers, the ability to feel 
EMF fields. Is that what they're called? Yeah. E- to yeah. feel that, that's a really low power, but it's still, you have more superpowers than me. I can't <laughs> feel that. You're still ahead of the majority of your species, but y- there's a risk to this. You're risking your life so that you can feel what it's like to be a refrigerator magnet. Anything that you put in your body, you risk getting sepsis from. There's a risk of sepsis. So, yeah, there is a risk. Um, what exactly is sepsis? That sounds like septic. Is that related? Yeah. What does it mean? It means some sort of infection? Yeah. And Basically that- bacterial infections of any sort. So I've had a buddy who's a, a surgeon who's told me, hey, don't do this. This is a bad idea. Right. Good for you. You got that done, but don't put anything else in your body because any implant can – Turn, can go bad. Yeah, can wow. go bad. I got my nose pierced in Venice Beach when I was 15, and you should have seen that, man. You Swell sh- up. Oh my god, it was Gross. just so nasty, man. My my nose got swollen. I pushed. I remember pushing against it in front of the mirror, and just like the amount of pus, like oh. where you get proud of the amount of pus coming out. <laughs> you know that can kill people. They get oh, yeah. staff like that, and it winds up eating your whole nose off. Oh, yeah, man. I got lucky. You know, you should never get your nose pierced. That's a ridiculous thing. But and, and there's no superpower in that. You just look like a <laughs> dumbass. <laughs> what he said. I'm with him. Um, so th- this is a tangible extra sense, though. This, yeah. this ability yeah. to detect a magnetic field. I mean, yeah. you really can do something that Duncan or I can't with your body because of these additions. It's it's profound. It's something I didn't understand when I got it done. Um, what started out like feeling bubbles. Uh-huh. Um, now, like, uh, I'll go to Home Depot and I'll be feeling stuff because it's, oh my God, so fun to feel stuff. Feel like, an what extra you, sense. What are you feeling? Um, mainly magnetic stuff. Some freak hanging around Home Depot, touching <laughs> all the stuff. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's a drill. Oh, wow. What are doing? Um, no, but Some guys I, over there just... with his pants down by the lawnmowers. <laughs> It's a magnetic field. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> hey, what's your favorite? This means you probably have like people have favorite flavors. Do you have yeah. a favorite machine you like to put your fingers near? Um, I've had I've had situations like I, I've been around really strong magnets, and when I first uh, was around a really strong magnet, I felt a feeling in the pit of my stomach like dread, and and it made me want to pull away. Huh. And run away from it because you're worried you're just going to get clinked. No, it wasn't a logical thing. It you wasn't, could never get an MRI. It wasn't a logic. Well, well, you know, the funny thing about that is I'm working out what our sensitivities are. There's been a lot of debate among the people who've had these things on how how close we can get to an MRI. Uh, there are some people who talk about it being dangerous because it can it can move around. Since this is subdermal, it's not anchored in any way like uh, other subdermal uh, body mods are um it could move your magnet a bit one way or another someone's um, got to test it but uh <laughs> there are people who've who've claimed uh, uh through the network of people who install these there are people who've claimed that they've had uh mris done and Felt their magnet dance around, and that's it. Whoa! But the MRI um, is a super powerful magnet. That yeah, you're talking about the tiny people. ones are like 1.5, 1.5 Teslas. But people go into those things with sweater uh, sweatshirts with uh, zippers on them. They do. Yeah, are you I sure? talked to a guy who operates one in a research facility. And you, that's why I'm like, but, funny you should mention this because... Okay, but that's not standard that's operational procedure. It's you're, not, you're not supposed to. You're supposed to get down to a robe. I just had one a couple of days ago. You take your clothes off. That you, don't, you don't go Are you sure ones. they weren't just fucking with you? Are you sure you don't know anything about MRIs and you've got magnets installed in your hand? That's crazy, man. You don't go in there with zippers on. What kind of a fucking doctor are these people going to? It's a research facility. It's not a doctor. Well, um, first, Joe, can I, okay, what, you said someone's died from an MRI. What is that? Well, I was trying to say is if you have metal in the room and they turn the MRI on, a child died recently accidentally because they had an oxygen tank in the room and they weren't aware they had it in there. So when you turn on the MRI, the the fucking oxygen tank comes flying into the machine. It's a giant, super powerful magnet. Right. And it killed them. By the time they could shut it off, he was already dead. I mean, it's an insane amount of pressure you're dealing with. 
and it's just because someone's dumb enough to have metal in the room. So I really find it hard to believe that any doctor would allow someone to go through an MRI with a zipper on. That's preposterous. That's just not what they do. So I, I question who you're talking to. You're talking to crazy people lying about putting magnets in their dicks and wearing zippers <laughs> into MRIs. You gotta hang out. You gotta hang out with a higher quality group of humans. A higher quality group yeah. of humans. But but there is there is uh, magnetic shielding because you know people that have pacemakers or other implants. Oh, they put like something over you yeah. to stop that, like yeah. a suit or something like that. Yeah. Huh. That's interesting. But you're not doing that with your fingers. You just let them tingle if you get in there, allegedly. Don't know. And That's something you really it's, should be careful about. But, but I think I think <laughs> I think it's it's something that should be tested. I think if we've yeah. – even, even if you're not – I'm not advocating that someone with this in their finger go in and, and test it. But you know, even if you can uh, replicate the consistency of human and put uh, like a human flesh, right. put the magnet in, and then expose it to something in like 1.5 Tesla just to see what happens. Now, you have this, which you've already done with the, the magnets. What is what's the next level thing? Obviously, everything progresses. So, what it, what are so, people considering doing now? So, um, there's or doing well. A lot of people are building devices that interact with the magnets. So uh, you can think of it as uh, because it interacts with electricity and magnetism. It's kind of like a really low level input. You can input anything. Uh, so if you've got an external device that's measuring, say, the amount of CO two in the room, you could hook that up through a coil around your finger, around your, your magnet finger, and have that information transferred into, like, pulses or how much it vibrates or whatever. So you're literally using an external sensor to, to give you data, any data, any data you want, and have it transfer that to the magnet. And wow. after, after some training, it becomes intuitive. So... Uh, you know, some people have done it with mainly sonar and thermal, like a like a thermal laser. Now, I, I know that people have talked about the uh, ultimate the 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 ultimate future of incorporating technology in the human body is the ability to take the mind and download its consciousness somewhere into uh, an artificial creation. But somewhere along the line, there's probably going to be some steps, right? <laughs> And you guys are kind of taking, like, one of these steps, like, by putting magnets in your body. When do you think you're going to see someone who puts a cell phone in their body? Is that coming? Is it going to be, like, a neural interface that allows you to get online with Wi-Fi? Well, we're somewhere towards that. That's something else we're working on. So um, our CTO, his dream, the thing that brought us all together wasn't magnets. That was... That was ancillary. He it wanted, was love, right? Yeah. Well, of course, it was love <laughs> because we all kind of knew each other and we all had this love of the future and we all kind of were told to sit back and let Motorola take care of it. Um, and none of us wanted to deal with that. Um, but he wanted to build something that he, he believed that we have the ability to do this stuff ourselves. We don't have to wait for some big company to do it. We can do it cheap. We can do it ourselves, design it ourselves. And since we know people who can install magnets under our skin, why not an implant? Why not like what something? Kind of implant? Well, um, the goal was to have something. Uh, so uh, basically, what it does is uh, it, it's a it's a rose compass uh, that electrically stimulates you. It's it's probably here on your calf, and it's always pointing north, so that you always have an intuitive sense of where north is. Now, if you've got if you've got the chip talking to some external thing, you could hook it up to a map system like Google Maps and be like, yo, take me home. And then you have an intuitive sense of where home is always. What? That's Wait amazing. a minute. What? <laughs> Hold on. Wait, back that up. <laughs> you have a compass installed in your body and the bo – how does it run? It just runs on the magnetism that's in the compass. It's all mechanical. There's it's no actually, electronics involved, uh, right? It can be powered wirelessly. So it's, it's got like a wireless coil in it. And so it's powered somehow yeah, by yeah. an external? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so you can like hover it over it. That's, that's what the, the, the dream is. And what is the method of communication to the mind that explains where nor north is or how to get home? So it's – uh, in the same way that you're using a really simple system in terms of the magnet, you're not using any magic. It's just vibrating. For this, it's just applying a very, very small amount of electricity, enough that you can – there's there's a sensation. 
So it's not like blaring and it's not shocking you, but there is a sensation. Is this completely theoretical, the idea of being able to find your way home, or is there any... We we have uh, parts of it parts of it built and actually when we came together and we had that idea we said okay this thing has way too many features so what we're going to do is we're going to build uh we're going to build an implant that's a kind of a halfway step to there so that we build the ground uh towards it and that's actually uh, it's actually this thing here and so what this thing does is it actually it's a, a quantified self uh health metric and this is uh this is just going to take data. You can check this out. This uh, takes medical data and uh, sends it to your phone. Uh, so if you can imagine having maybe six months' worth of, uh, of your medical data, and it's your data. It's not anyone else's data. Your data. Um, and you can do whatever with it. Uh, and so we wanted to kind of make, do, do a halfway project so that we get familiar with implant technology and then move towards really cool shit. The I I, I understand um, the idea of a compass. I understand that you, you could power it somehow. But what I don't understand is how the compass is communicating with your mind. So it, in the in the same way that uh, the nervous system is is communicating with your mind, it's not uh, it's not sending it wirelessly to your brain. Right. right? There there are things in your body that's communicating to your nervous system that then goes to your mind. Right. And so you're literally uh you're literally making a new mini organ that uh or another part of your body that interfaces with your nervous system through electricity and then you're just saying it's like a vibration or something. It's like a low level pulse or something. Yeah, right? it's it's a low level it's a, pulse. It's a yeah, I understand yeah. that. I understand that you would get a, a sensation, but I don't understand how it could be directional. I don't see the mechanism well, for that. Well, it's it's a it's a rose compass, right? So what does a rose compass mean? It's uh so it's got like a it's, clock. Yeah, it's got uh, north, south, east, west, and then like northwest. Oh, that's called a rose compass. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so it's a compass. Yeah, and yeah, it's it's, it's a compass. Okay. And so. Uh, let's say, let's say I'm facing north. Uh-huh. The stimulation will be going this way, right? But if I if I turn, it's going to start. It's so gonna start stimulating. It's directional it's in directional. that wherever the north is, it gives a signal yeah. pointing where the arrow goes. Yeah. So now, the arrow it not just doesn't just act as a beacon. It somehow or another like sends a charge mm-hmm. off in that direction. Yeah. And then like, it becomes like a, intuitive once you start determining what that signal means. Like it becomes a new thing, sort of like sound, like you hear sound over here yep. and you know yeah. it's coming in that yeah. direction. Yeah, so That's it's crazy. It's intuitive in the sense that like I would be working with uh with some of the guys in the lab and you know, they've got two or three implants and they would say leave the soldering iron on and they'd go to reach to grab something and just them feeling the 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 intensity of the soldering iron would make them pull back. Right. And so it's not like they're like, "Oh shit, that that might kill me. Let me pull back." It's more like it's more like every time you reach over here something screams at you or or something like pokes you. It's yeah. like people who are allergic to cats. If you're around a cat, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you, that's a kind of superpower. A person who's allergic to cats can walk into a house and be like, you have cats, right? You have cats. They can sense the cat because they start yeah. sneezing and Especially coughing. Especially if you're dirty and you don't clean your house. <laughs> yeah, well, generally cat, people have cats. Cats well, no, are all that gross little creatures. Pretty filthy. When you walk into a house and you get that first waft of the yeah. cat litter box oh. mixing in with old bananas. It's so nice you have a <laughs> box of shit in your house. Yeah, a nice dirty <laughs> box of shit and a, and a filthy witch animal want peering out at you from yeah, the wall. Ready to smother your baby while it's sleeping. Suck the breath right out. Are you You're guys going to destroy like cats? cats? That's awesome. Um, I think this people like you make me love existing today because the idea that there are human beings at this very moment and i picture you in a basement in in basements with straight razors shaking cutting themselves open and just putting chips inside of their no, body no they well, go to doctors well, and have all well, this done man well, come well, on wait, dude. fantasy <laughs> <laughs> Well, Leather but, straps in their mouth. <laughs> Bite but, down on a twig. <laughs> now, now, well, you guys are both right. You're both kind of right. See, yeah, you don't all go to a doc. What doctor do you go to? What doctor do you guys go to? I, 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 doctor, I, I, doctor Evil. Doctor Evil. 
and, and and I imagine that when before you guys put the magnets in, you're snorting oxycotton <laughs> or like you're definitely on painkillers, right? Well, when I got my implant all? done, I got it done with no pain meds, and uh, oh my gosh. Um, it was a rush. I, I, I never had that much. That That's much, a new uh, meme. Dude is standing there with a razor blade, and the photo says, "I got it done without painkillers." And oh my gosh, what a rush! But I, I don't. It was. It, it was. It was something else. The amount of endorphins you got. It's. It's trauma. It's trauma. Your body's going through trauma, and your body releases all that endorphins all at once. You you, yeah. you definitely you don't remember the fact that you just got hurt. Going to shock. Yeah. I, I don't I moment. don't advocate people doing this. Uh, to I don't I don't advocate people the opening though. themselves up at all. Uh, uh, That's not going to stop anybody. It's well, <laughs> too late right now. There's already 700 teens with exacto knives putting their dad's wristwatch bandana into- in mouth <laughs> tugging. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> well, but. Y- Kids, if you're watching this, slice. seriously, don't, Kids. don't. It never ends well. Someone already tried it, and they're kind of fucked up because of it. So Who's no. that? Who tried what? Um, uh, so one of the people that pioneered this, uh, this, this uh, lady out in Scotland called Leps Anonym, she uh, did this talk called Cybernetics for the Masses, um, where she advocating, you know, Im- implants. And uh, she did it herself. She she sterilized. Uh, what did she use? She used. Uh, she used vodka. She, she used, used vodka. vodka and hot glue to coat the magnets. She uh, in her speech she told everyone, "Hey, I don't care how hardcore you think you are. Get a spotter. Yeah, and, because you and, will pass out. And that that to me that to me. She also used a vegetable peeler. Yeah, not that to me hey. is not. That to me is not. Yeah. Is not DIY cybernetics. That's irresponsible. That's and crazy. That's bitch. Really, that's, I, I can tell well, you that when you told me your name. That's <laughs> a shit. You don't leave it home with your keys. By the, I've okay. seen that speech leapt in and I'm yeah. gave, and I I emailed her directly after the speech because <laughs> I wanted to get her on my podcast. But she first of all I didn't know she was a she because she's androgynous. You can't right. really tell. But she looks like she fell out of a Philip K. Dick novel. Like she is a, you, a really fascinating being. Like it's a really curious being. And she seems kind of nonchalant about what she's doing. And it reminds me of you guys a little bit because you guys seem to be brushing off the fact that what you're doing can make it so that in 20 years you are just basically a trembling drink machine. Somebody could put a cocktail in your hand and mix it up because you have some kind of severe neurological damage from the weird chemicals in your magnets going into your brains. It could be true. You're right. You're right. Totally right. We probably would be dealing with something worse than a Parkinson's-like state. We'd Can probably... you get up on the mic, man? <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. That's okay. Um, you're right. Um, there are risks. Um, when Left gave that speech, she gave it with the intent that people out there would see her process and go, oh, my God, you could do it so much better. You could do it so much safer. And when people are talking about what grinding's about and why it's called grinding, that's part of, part of the spirit of being a grinder is being open about your processes because you're hoping that someone will look at your mm-hmm. processes and go, oh, yeah, I see what you did. I see how you made it better. I can make it even better and even but more. Why, safe. why grinder? Um, it, you know, so it, it originates from uh, a comic book called Doctor Sleepless, and uh, uh, there's a. Uh, there, you guys are dorks. <laughs> no, they're not dorks. It's awesome. I want to be a grind. It's yeah, not yeah. a bad thing. Oh. But you guys are dorks. And so there's there's You're not a, dorks. It's not a bad thing. I'm these a dork are, too. These are pioneers. You're a dork too. How dare you? <laughs> You're a dork. I guess I am a dork. Cause you, right read, now- you read Walking Dead comic books. You're a dork. <laughs> oh, man. That's intense. And you tell me I have to that's read them. That's intense, him. man. Dude, you got to read them. <laughs> he, he's a dork. <laughs> that does There's not... There's wrong with it, man. There's nothing wrong with being a dork. Don't be scared of being a dork. Okay, well, fine. I'm a I'm dork. I'm a dork, too. I'd rather be a dork with magnets under my fingers than not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be a dork. I'd like to be a dork with a low It's not level. bad to be a dork, but the fact that you guys call yourself grinders out of a, the, a comic book... That's clearly yeah. pretty dorky. Yeah, yeah, it is. But it's not yeah. bad. But See, it, you embrace being a dork. I'm, I, I think the term dork is a dorky term. No, it's an awesome term, and that's what we were when we were out there looking for Bigfoot. We were two dorks. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Look at two dorks looking for Bigfoot. By the way, having the time of our lives with fellow dorks. There's nothing yeah, wrong with being no, a dork. Yeah, no, no disrespect intended. No disrespect. It's uh, it's you know you're not taking yourself that seriously. You're naming your your whole group after comic books. Sure, it's not wrong with that. Yeah, a, a part of a part of what we do is um, is 
using we're still using the scientific method. We're not just like sure yeah. yeah. Well, it, it, we're, we're, <laughs> what we're doing is we're putting our method out there for it to be criticized, so that it's safe in in our community. Right. And we're it's not uh, you know cut yourself open with vegetable peelers, and it's not it's not wow. have it's not have the method be held up by the FDA for 50 years. It's about knowing what the risks are as an individual and deciding whether to take it or not. Now, that piece of plastic, silicon, whatever it is, what, what is that exactly made out of that you showed me earlier, the chip? Oh, that's, that's a that made out regular of? circuit board. There's all sorts of bad shit in there for yeah. you. Yeah. What was it made out of? Like, do you know? <sighs> Fiberglass, yeah. copper, metal, plastics. Where would you put that? Inside a uh, silicone silicone shape there's a bioproofing process like a sheath um like a condom silicone condom sort of a thing more like a uh something more take, secure you take a mm-hmm. cnc you make a cnc mold uh-huh. uh reverse so this is an unpopulated board because all of our regular prototypes are being tested um on, on who on on for function functionability yeah like functionality, like heating, functionality. heating it heating it uh, crushing it, uh, exposing oh, it to so all sorts of crazy. Things. Once we're confident that we have like something that can handle the stresses that we think uh, someone who would have something in it for a year, which is our goal, like get it inside someone for a year and take it out. Um, then we're testing bioproofing. Bioproofing is doing a pressure injected silicone mold. Um, oh. Wow. That do just you, sounds like it would hurt. Do you guys have in your... Com- <laughs> <laughs> That's not inside you. you I know, I know. Oh. Oh. What, what, oh. what I want to know, though, is like, what part of the body would you install this thing? Well, forearms. Tim's been talking about the forearm. Yeah. And Why the forearm? Because it would be cool to look down at your arm and see LEDs lighting up underneath wow. your skin. Yeah. So that's part of it. You guys aren't just pioneers trying to redefine humanity. You just want to have shining lights under your skin. And well, want to yeah, capture we, some dork pussy. Well, Let's be honest. We did. I think that we did want our jetpack. Many different types of. Pussy. This is our jetpack. <laughs> I but bet, that, man. If you're you're a super baller in the grinder community, if you walk around with a glowing implant under your arm, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. guys have a uh, in your community somebody who you know will put anything under their skin? Like somebody who walks around jangling with metal pieces and lights. Is there is there a person who's got the most implants? Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't think we've reached there yet. What's think. the most incre- like the most extreme implant that you're aware of? Maybe Rich. Yeah, probably uh fucking Rich. So- rich. <laughs> What's going on with Rich? <laughs> so uh he's got uh he's got uh two magnet implants in his finger and he actually has um he has a coil, like a huge coil that he uses to uh to be able to like hear radio stations and all sorts of craziness they're basically implanted earphones wait a minute he has so he has <laughs> magnets on his fingers in his ears in his ears his ears he has magnets yeah yeah so he's magnets on his fingers in his ears is that what you said yeah he's got um he's got like two in his ears his fucking uh, yeah. ears man that's yeah. scary yeah yeah they you letting he's, the dude operate on your ears and he's intense magnets he's in intense there? and so what's the coil the coil is uh, like uh, any coil. It's stimulating these magnets, makes a magnet vibrate. So he hooked up this coil to uh, a little amplifier, and that amplifier is sending sound through it. Wow. Like uh, your standard speaker, right? Right. He sends sound through a speaker coil, makes a magnet jump back, or makes a magnet uh, force a coil back and forth, yeah. and you make sound. So he's using this, uh, sending electromagnetic waves to uh, the magnets in his ears, his magnets dance around, and they give him sound. So he was able to uh, use a Bluetooth uh, connection to his phone to hear his phone through his invisible uh, earphones. His f- wow. That's insane. And yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, it it sounds really crazy and dangerous, but I think I think there's we're also trying to uh, establish a precedent that we want, like we. No matter what organization pops up, w- there's going to be cyborgs in the future, and I, I think strong that, words. I I think that that's what we're. <laughs> I think that is. that's what we're moving towards, yeah. and I think that we want to move to a future where people are openly experimenting with themselves instead of having to go to one source, uh, you know, like company X to get their implants. And I, I think there's there's uh, a sort of liberation that you have. 
by either making your own implant or knowing knowing what it was made of, who coded it, what the code is, and and all sorts of stuff. So in our community, we share all of the information. There's there is no weird outside control because everyone knows how it was built. And if you don't like how it was built, you can change it. Aren't you, you already a cyborg if you wear glasses? Isn't that already an incorporation of technology into the human body? I, I try to avoid like the word cyborg because <laughs> the moment that people start saying cyborg, everyone's like, you're not a cyborg. But Cyborgs are this. Doesn't that yeah, mean, yeah, look, yeah, you, yeah. Some, someone made with a machine these things you have sitting on your face, and that's how, that's how you see better. And without those, right. you wouldn't see so good. I, I right. think I, I, I thought a cyborg, it means that it's part of you now. You can't take it off. Like it's, is that it's what it is? It's permanently in you. Yeah, you've well, merged that's first with the steps. machine. Hearing implants, those are first steps. Yeah. 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 Hearing Absolutely. aids. Yeah. But and, you know what else is crazy and dangerous? L- learning to build an airplane. Like, think of the Wright brothers way back when, when they were telling people, we're going to try to make a device that makes us fly like birds. Frightened, terrified people like, are you out of your mind? You're going to fall. You're just going to fall to your death. And it's true. There's an implicit risk whenever you're trying to create some new invention. And if you wait for the FDA, if we sit around and wait for Apple or for Microsoft to get this stuff passed, it is going to be 50 years, 100 years, because we need you guys to turn it. A few of you are going to have to turn into the Toxic Avenger. A few of you are... It's true, man. You need it, because they, they've but made themselves guinea pigs for the sake of our species. It's well, worse than, I think they did it because they're enjoying it. Well, yeah, It's worse it, than a 50-year wait. What's, what's bad about it... Microphone. What's bad about it... Thank you. No problem. Uh, what's bad about it is the fact that there are people who can't afford what an implant would cost. And um, like with cell phones, I saw cell phones be a tool of people who had tons of money. And I saw that with every other technology. And when you're talking about modifying your body in the ways that we're talking about it, and it seems like it has so much potential to be a useful tool for people, to make that something that's only available to people with large amounts of capital yeah, seems yeah. like yeah. A, wrong. The, well, then I don't want to live in that. Already, I, I don't uh, want that. has already addressed this and uh, quite accurately when he talks about technology being applied in the cell phone world. He's like, it, it, initially it was just a privileged few. He goes, now like 70 plus percent of the population on the planet has cell phones. You can go to the jungles of Africa, you find people who have cell phones. People have cell phones everywhere you look. Which, so which, it starts off... Like it's really expensive, but if it proves to be effective, it becomes accessible to almost everyone. Which which is true, but uh, but if you look at if you look at waves of technology, right, and the evolution of technology, the people that get it first get to dictate how the technology is used, and they get to dictate the political landscape, right? So my my uh, how so? so for example, well, you'd look at the cell phone uh, users don't get to dictate the political landscape of cell who, phones. Who, who, who so is, that's the one example that we producers. use. Yeah, but it's not cell phone producers. You're talking about people who buy them. You're talking about people who can afford to use them. Now they're saying that they're saying that when you, a cell phone is invented, when Verizon builds a cell phone, they get into an agreement with the NSA, and there's code inside your cell phone that makes it so it's tracking you. If uh, imagine. <laughs> Imagine, There's, imagine that technology applied to to some kind of uh, implant. Imagine if they came up with some neural prosthetic, where uh, you know the neural prosthetic that you can a- attach to your hippocampus that allows you to record your memories. Imagine if the government invents that and has some secret code in it that can shut off your brain. Okay, but that's not even what they were talking about. They were talking about privileged people who we have were talking about to this propriety. Power. Propriety, but even, propriety. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, owning ownership. So like. Uh, with cell phones, you have chips that that are really good at decoding video. Uh-huh. Really, really good at it. Right. And they're really tiny. And you know, they're also kind of cheap, but they're not open for everyone to use. So when you have something like the Raspberry Pi come along, they have to beg. What's a Raspberry make, Pi? It's a handheld pr- computer. It's 35 bucks. Does everything regular? Oh yeah, it's crazy. Like that. Yeah. They like on Reddit, it always pops up with what some new thing with Raspberry. It's just a super cheap operating system, right? It's a super cheap computer. Oh, it's, it's a, computer. a super cheap computer. It, it's about the size of a credit card. It does everything that computers should do. So you can get on the net. You can use it to on do a credit card. Um, it's credit card palm sized. It's palm sized. Oh, it's a screen as well. Uh, no, you need uh. Screen, keyboard, 
uh, whatever interfaces. Oh, I it's see. So like it's the, the box. actual it's the CPU, the, the whole yeah. deal, the box itself. Wow, yeah. it's credit card size. That's and fascinating. they had to make deals with uh, non-disclosure agreements and make all sorts of deals to attain the technology for their cell phone parts that they're using in there. That's not open to everyone. Huh. So, you know, in that same way, we believe that people will create better when they get the keys to the candy store and they can actually experiment with all the parts that are being used and being developed as much as possible. We want to encourage that play, playing that's interesting, but uh, what I was concerned with more was not the uh, the people um, that are going to profit or not profit from creating these things. I was talking about people getting access to the technology itself, and it seems like that's inevitable. It seems like if it's effective for rich people, it will eventually trickle down to the rest of the population no matter what, as long as it's really worthwhile. But I, I think that when you've got a, a particular group of people – always getting first access. Mm -hmm. They can always determine how it's used. And by the time the technology is democratized to a point where it, you know, first advantage doesn't matter, then there's something else because they're sitting on the capital from the last thing that came along. Mm -hmm. So you've got this perpetual cycle of, well, we're making it first, so we always get to dictate the terms of which this, this thing, the legal and technical terms by which it's this thing or this type of thing. Right, but isn't that what ingenuity is all about? Isn't that why people spend so much money on companies to try to develop products? I, I mean, I, isn't that like sort of their mo the motivation? The motivation is to capture the marketplace and to be able to sell this incredible thing that they've created. I think so you're you, saying it should be locked down? No, no, no. I'm saying it shouldn't be locked down. But I, I'm saying you, I, I meant locked down in, as in once something is created, uh, basically it's available to everyone. It shouldn't be available just to this one person that created it. Yeah, I think so. And I, I think mm. I think that's that's the most ethical way to do it in in this case because uh when you're talking about augmenting humans, you're talking about giving them additional information about the world. Mm -hmm. And this is our most powerful tool right. ever. And so when you when you're talking about supercharging this, you're giving individuals an, a, a great advantage over others. Mm -hmm. And with any other technology, you know there's abuses. If you look at Nuclear technology, right? Uh, uh, the Soviet Union and, and the United States got to dictate foreign policy for how many years? Because they had that and other countries didn't. And I, I personally think that that's the scale of power we're talking about. When you're saying like neural implants and, and all of these really powerful devices, I think that the first people that get it get to dictate how everyone else plays. So you're essentially – what you're saying is that these new technologies are going to be so powerful that once people get control of them, they'll literally be able to enslave great groups of people who don't have them. They'll have power over them. They'll have advantage over them, over them mm -hmm. and they'll decide – or could decide to use that advantage to control, to monopolize the use of these technologies, monopolize the use of these human improvements, these technological human improvements, and they'll just hoard them all themselves. And, yeah, I mean, and not in any like. But has anybody ever any, done that any, with anything? Technology? Has anybody hoarded technology ever for themselves? It seems like I mean, if you can sell it, people sell it. Well, it, it never it never lasts long. But what I'm talking about are the ram the the social ramifications. Right. Of of people trying to hold on to that yeah. for whatever. Because, for example, everyone, every army today uses guns. Mm -hmm. But we're still reeling from the cultural effects of one group of people having guns and another group of people not having guns. Right. We're still reeling from from, you know, countries hating each other and and ethnic tension and whatever. So it's not it's not so much about the technology. It's about this is what happens when you when you try to lock it down. Eventually, it's going to spread, but you're causing damage by trying to lock it down. Right. That seems to be, uh, I don't know, it's a, it's a funny argument. It's an interesting argument, and it gets into uh, a social engineering or socialism uh, point of view, where you got to go, well, how do you decide to distribute uh, technology then? How, there, there are how companies does it, how that, is it handled? Like, like Adafruit, mm -hmm. uh, Adafruit, SparkFun. They're open source, and they still make money. Well, there it certainly is. I mean, I mean, I mean that's uh, if any place embraces open source, it's the internet and technology, and you know, of course, Linux and Unix. Sure. And there's always been uh, a whole open source community online, but to dictate that that's mandatory—that's where things get sketchy. Uh, I, 
You know what I'm saying? I, I want, I want, I'm not saying that I don't want a future where corporations don't sell this. I want people to have options. I, told, I, don't I, want, I, I totally understand what you're saying, but it, it goes against every other way we manage innovation. And we, the way we manage innovation is people get copyrights, and trademarks, and you create something and that becomes you, and then you own that, and then you can sell it or license it out to other people. What you're essentially saying is that when it becomes to a human benefit, now no longer do you have the option. Now you're going to distribute it freely to everybody and i i say like you're 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 regulating like in a way that has never been regulated before and that's a socialist idea and it's interesting it's interesting um it's debatable I mean, <laughs> it's interesting and it's debatable I, per- but what you're what you're talking about is uh sort of a, a mandatory type of a thing well i i, I don't want to i don't want to say hey google you have to make this this implant open source what i'm right. saying is i want a future where you can either get Corporation X, or you can go to the open source community B. Right. To, to but isn't that inevitable? I mean, that's what you have with cell phones. I mean, you but, can buy a, an Android phone, or you can buy an Apple phone, or you can buy some no name phone. I mean, I mean, eventually, if something is worth something, people sell it to the point where you're going to have leaders in the marketplace. But once it has, once, once the public has access, those leaders are based on the market itself. They're based on what people buy, what they like, what they enjoy. You can't monopolize if someone, when if if everyone's selling a similar product and one person's better, that's the one that succeeds, and yes. that's that's sort of where we're at. Because of the fact that we don't just say when something comes along, like, hey, everybody has access to this, fuck patents, fuck trademarks. You know, that that's literally against the way innovation has spawned human beings to this point in the first place. But it, but there's other mo- – there's I think there's other motivations than capital. I think that, what, that sure. the, the motivation in this kind of technology is so much bigger than money. What you're talking about is achieving uh, the ability with technology to produce emotions or to create psychic states. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is a an amazing thing, and that's an amazingly powerful thing. So, so is calling uh, people. Yeah, but I, I, you know what? I'd rather have an orgasm helmet than a cell phone. But it's, I, look, it's not either or. Well, it's just, not either or. Well, what I'm, I'm saying is cell phones didn't get socialized, and this technology shouldn't either. Well, it's, I don't think they're saying it should or shouldn't be socialized. I'm just th- they're, well, they're, they're, they're trying to make an open source version of this stuff. I don't okay, think but that if they, Motorola if they succeed, is going to do that for us. Yeah, I don't think they're going the to do that for us. Who knows what they're doing? <laughs> Who knows? But what I'm saying is if you make it, you shouldn't be entitled to distribute it to everybody if you want to. You, yes. But you shouldn't be you shouldn't be forced I, into distributing. I, I, I want everybody. I want a future of options and 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 in terms of the technology coming out, I want the open source and the closed source to come out at the same time. Because any any lag time between the closed source and the open source, again, it starts to produce produce problems so i want a future where people have options as to what they're going to get and i think that we've already seen problems with uh with technologies being pigeonholed so that you know we can't have we can't not have a smartphone but we know the fuckery that's going on with Uh smartphones right and so there's what what do you what do you do well, there's a lot of problems with smartphones. If you really want to get to the bottom of it, the real problem is they're all based on conflict minerals. The real problem with smartphones is that you follow every smartphone down to its source, and you've got a little kid in Africa with a stick knocking rocks out of the dirt. And that's real. And that, they can't fix that yet. They really can't. They don't know what to do yet. So they, they need these conflict minerals, and they're not available in very, very many spots of the world. And the, the places where they can get them the cheapest, that's where they get them. And that's why you have civil war in the Congo. That's why you have people fighting over these resources. So you've got a real problem besides the innovation. You've got a real problem in the morality of actually owning a cell phone. Because everyone who owns a cell phone is a piece of shit. If you really get down to the core of it. I mean, this just, there's no way around it. I, th- I think this is, a, this is an unbelievably fascinating subject, and I think it's inevitable that uh, we, we have this sort of discussion in, the, in, the, in this argument. And I think what we really need is the idea of capitalism or competition merged with morality and ethics and humanity. And in, instead, what we usually have is he who gets to the top of the mountain kicks everybody in the face that's trying <laughs> to get up. And mm-hmm. in, instead of like pulling people up with them and humanity benefiting – and, and, and sharing something like that in an open source manner because you think it's the right thing to do, 
instead of mandating it, I think it almost should be a part of success itself. That success itself sort of generates uh, altruism. It generates happiness. It generates generosity. It should. It's like once you have some and you care about others, you should give. You should help. You should boost them up. And we don't have that attitude in this country, unfortunately. We have this ultra-competitive attitude, which has spawned so much innovation because of it. But along the way, it's also made a bunch of fucking assholes. Yeah. You know, a bunch yeah. of heartless assholes just <laughs> caught up in the hunt. Don't, don't, don't you guys think that the it's eventually going to be impossible to keep anything private and yes. that, that it's that it's like Absolutely. to even yeah. to so we're entering into a future where there's really not going to be such a thing <clears throat> as secrets we're entering into a future where everything will eventually be leaked in some way everything will well, either- I'll call you one better i don't think money's going to be real anymore I think we're going to get to a point where there's not going to be ones and zeros are not going to cut it as far as you have this and he doesn't have that. And I really believe that we're going to get to some weird place where just by nature of the, the, the just the progression of technology itself, the dissolving of boundaries, the access to information. Ones and zeros are all you have when it comes to money. Money is just information. It's going to get to a point where the idea, the paradigm that we operate under, we think it's important. I keep my stuff. You keep your stuff. I pay for this. You pay for that. It doesn't exist anywhere else in nature. We've decided that this is normal. We're going to get to a point in time where you're not going to be able to lock it down anymore. You're not going to be able to hold on to money. It's not going to mean anything. We're going to have to decide what the fuck to do with all the different shaped houses. We're going to have to decide who gets the food. <laughs> yeah. But you're, you, it's not going to be real anymore. It's going gonna, it's gonna to merge into some next level shit. And that's I the future so. of humanity. I hope so too. But then I hope people don't get lazy as fuck because of that. Well, I, one of I, the reasons why people have done so well, which is uh, it's also arguable whether or not doing so well is a good thing. But one of the reasons is that we've needed to succeed in order to survive. I don't. No, I think. Well, how the fuck I think, do you think we got well, out of caves? Well, well, how do you think we didn't get killed off like Neanderthal? How do you think we didn't become food for the prey? We're weak and slow. We, just because we, we innovated and we pushed forth and we, we got the fuck away from all the things that are dangerous. We locked up cities. We invented guns. We did a lot of shit in order to make innovation possible. Because if you go to places on the earth like the Amazon or like Africa, there's no fucking innovation, okay? You're wearing a piece of skin over your dick and you're looking for something to eat. And that's what you do every day. You get up in the morning early. And you go look for something to eat because if you don't, you die. So my 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 favorite my favorite example uh, is the when we started growing crops. Right before most of our most of uh, a human's time was spent looking for food. Right, you didn't have time to ask, you know, mom, what is that? Because you were fucking either hunting something or running away from something. That was just about your entire life. When you are now growing food, you now you now have a wide space in your day where you're not doing anything even entire seasons where you've got food stored up so what do you do you start asking questions you start making art you start writing things down because you've got time now i think that when i think technology should be about liberating people to do what they want this follow- what, i'm sorry to cut you off but what you're saying this to me is one of the great uh uh naive ideas of transhumanism which is the notion that if you remove from human beings, the, the need for something. In other words, because the ultimate goal of transhumanism, I think, is to t- take, to shrink down the moment between what you can think you want and the moment of having it to nothing so that you instantaneously have something, whether it's by neurologically stimulating your brain in a way that's exactly identical to reality so you can experience any feeling state that you want or whether it's using matter assimilators to build something that you've contemplated. And all of humanity has been based on overcoming the obstacle between those two things. But in overcoming the obstacle, you gain wisdom. When you're learning how to like play piano, you don't just get to learn how to play play piano you get to learn the discipline of years and years of working to play piano if suddenly we can download into someone's mind how to play piano if we remove that discipline then oh, what joe's saying I, is I, you end up with slugs I, but i i think that i think no matter how hard uh, a dog tries it can never learn calculus there's just an upper limit you just no matter it can study forever and it just it won't happen and so i think that there are things that we just as Humans, we just, no matter how hard we try, there's an upper limit. And so when you begin, let's say, downloading information, there's some things you'll get easy. But there are other things that no one's ever discovered that you now have to discover. New ways to play that have never been even, you know, thought about ever. 
So I think that that when you when you augment, when you make yourself more intelligent, more capable, now now you don't have to do hard work to do what humans can do, but you still have to do hard work to do whatever. There's if I something- can explain it in layman's terms, this is a technological version of mo money, mo problems. <laughs> exactly. That's what you, it is. Yes, you don't you just get make you your don't. problems far more complex. Like people thought, you know what? Once human beings have supermarkets and you just go with a credit card, you don't even have to bring around a bag of gold. Then <laughs> no one's going to be depressed. Turns out, eh, people are more depressed. They're sad. They're looking for meaning. They're not hunting and gathering their food. They're missing all those 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 rewards that are built into the human genome they don't get them anymore so what do they do they take prozac and they drive fast and they watch stupid movies yeah well it, can i put it mo in money mo problem <laughs> let me put it in non layman's burning man terms if you take the tibetan book of the dead one of the bardos or one of the hells in the tibetan book of the dead is called the hell of hungry ghosts and what this hell is is these beings living in this weird place have this infinite appetite and anything they can think of to eat immediately appears in front of them so they have the combination of always being hungry mixed in with being able to instantaneously create any food that they want and that creates a hell state where all they're doing is feeding and eating to try to quench this endless human appetite now obviously we're really far away that's from- probably coming though i mean if you wanted to think of something that someone would invent that's without doubt inside the realm of possibility we already have boner pills for old dudes on their death <laughs> yeah. pill uh, on their deathbed they chomp down a couple of pills and they got a zombie <laughs> cock we already have that you're telling me they're not going to have something where it just keeps your hunger going you, you never get satisfied you'll yeah. be hungry all the time what's your favorite thing to do isn't it eat mine too wouldn't yeah. it be great if you were hungry always and you just be a professional eater all day. Yeah, that's without how, a doubt, some that's idiot. That's how we design fast food. Think already. about what people have done to their lips. People would do that. People have <laughs> blown up their lips, putting magnets in their fingers. No but offense. I, they would definitely do that. I, I think that that that's it, you, if that's something uh, negative about the human condition. I mean, if if we have that technology at some point, then we would also have the technology to change it, and that's another discussion yeah. whether we should get rid of the hedonic treadmill. Well, I'm not even sure that it's a negative. I'm just uh, uh, it's almost like a pattern. I mean, I think whatever it took to get humans to this point in history, whatever it took to get us to what we are now, is an incredible process. I mean, from whatever we were, from multi-celled organisms onto this thing with laptops. That process is insane. And the idea that that process just changes because we add a chip and, you know, we, it's, no, it's going to be, there's going to be like a growing phase and then it's going to become something new. Just like it became this. Yeah. If this is unrecognizable to some crazy Neanderthal 50,000 years ago and it's what we will be 50,000 years from now, it's probably unrecognizable to us. Yeah. And whether it happens slowly or quickly, what has happened in our lifetime, man? The, the idea of, of the internet crept up on us so damn yeah. quick that we all just accept it as a fact. Whereas if you brought any other time in history, it's the most insane piece of sorcery and magic the world has ever <laughs> yeah. known. Just 20 years ago, yeah. it would have been insane. Just Fuck 20 conjuring, years ago. conjuring a dragon. The idea that you could have a little little glass box in your pocket sure. that answers all your questions. It's amazing. You could send messages, including video, from people to people all around the world. It's insane. Everything about it's insane. Incredible. And it's just a part of our accepted every day life slowly happen slowly or quickly whether it's big you know slowly we think of it slowly in the course of human history it's a massive burst of innovation but in our lifetimes it's been 10 20 years and then boom it's all here but the idea that you're going to stop at that you know or that we should even resist no. the next level it's, it seems pretty silly i, I just yeah. you I, can't resist it. you can't stop no. it it's, but it's just soon- it's interesting to sit around and go what the hell is it going to be yeah you know, that's where it gets weird <laughs> yeah and, and we don't know but no i i don't I don't think that uh, primitive man could have put a person on the moon if they were still worrying about catching that pig. Is, no, you're is, absolutely is what right. I'm saying. Yeah. And whatever, whatever aspirations we will have in 10,000 years, we won't get to that if, if we don't do certain things. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think that a part of, uh, a part of humanity, 
that I think we should keep is our need to explore and understand. And I think that if we're still worrying about, you know, getting cancer at 60, Mm -hmm. we're not going to get there. Right. I think it's inevitable that we still keep exploring. I I really don't. I don't. That's it's why we're here. It's it's a whole part of the whole thing. There's no getting around that. No. You got a video to show us? Uh, Well, we've got uh, something queued up with uh, Tim when when our buddy, our CTO, got his magnets installed. Uh, he he got it on video. Would you like okay, to check yeah, it out? Okay, yeah, I want to definitely see that. Slap that up. Oh, Jesus, Tim. <laughs> this is Tim? Oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah, this, this is, is Tim? This is Tim. Oh, my God. Holy What's with the sound? Shit. Don't know. What's that sound? Hold on. Pause no that. Clue. Pause that. Why does that sound like that? I don't what know. kind of soundtrack is on that? That's so stupid. Kill the sound. Just play that. <laughs> Because obviously there's something going on behind it. We, we it might even be a movie. Wow. Okay, Who's the so guy doing the surgery? Some asshole. <laughs> they found him at Home Depot. <laughs> they were running around touching lawnmowers. He's like, "Hey, I can do that for you." He's someone who uh, <laughs> does does tattoo work, and he specializes in doing subdermal stuff. Wow. So Meanwhile, there are a lot he has of shitty do- tattoos. Never trust a tattoo artist with shitty tattoos. <laughs> There's a thing called a laser tattoo removal, son. Look into it. Never trust oh a surgeon God. with shitty tattoos. Especially on his face. <laughs> Tat- surgeons with tattoos on their face, boy. Avoid. You're going to go under in 10, 9. I'm going to fuck you in your ass. Wait. What? what? <laughs> okay, so this guy is cutting and he's inserting this magnet into this dude's fingertip. This it's a very, very, very tiny magnet. Yeah. yeah. Well, how how would you describe it? It looks like a BB that's been split into like sixes, right? That's how small it looks. It's about two millimeters wide. It's a little. Just, oh, that's bigger than I thought. Maybe maybe a little less than two millimeters. Because that looks really tiny. Wow. Maybe it's just a perspective uh, of this uh, this video, but that looks like well under a millimeter. What's the charge for this procedure? Three. The guy's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Hundred percent free. Fucks you up. <laughs> Stick shit in your fingertips. It depends and on who you. you get, who you get that stuff done from. But it'd be pretty reasonable. It'd be a bargain price, anywhere between seventy five and one fifty. Just like most subdermal uh, body mods. So what is cheap. um when you're talking about the future? When you guys sit around and you you bring up what's on the horizon? What's like the big theoretical on the horizon? Does it have anything to do with like the kind of technology that we see in Google Glass? being incorporated in like maybe uh, a neural sort of a thing so there was a there was a paper put out uh, a few months ago about uh connecting two minds of rodents uh and so there was one rodent if i'm not mistaken in virginia and there was another rodent somewhere in brazil and they put this chip into the into the brains of these two mice and put them through an obstacle course and uh, with a, a s- roughly 60 to 70 percent um, uh, crossover rate, the other mouse actually learned uh, the obstacle course mm. of the other mouse it was connected to. Do you know so, that's been done without chips, though? The, Rupert Sheldrake d- wrote a whole book about it. It's called The, the Morphic Field and right. uh, Morphic Residence. And uh, he wrote a book uh, about uh, dogs knowing when their owners are coming home. Right. And uh, people being able to tell when people look at the back of their heads, and it's a fascinating sort of a theory. But he um, he showed that I don't know if it's been verified 100. percent So, but I know he wrote that he showed that if you teach a rat in one place a maze, that rats somewhere else, another part of the world, will learn that similar maze or that same maze quicker, statistically quicker. Right. They've uh, also I, shown that chimpanzees, I, once they start inventing um, things to do with tools, chim- chimpanzees, we, they've demonstrated, like um, a, a, um, an orangutan in uh, Africa learned how to spearfish by watching people do it. There's a picture of this thing doing it, and it's a motherfucker. It's the craziest thing ever. Well, other orangutans started doing it, too. They, once, once they start learning things, it's almost like it's in the ether. It's very strange. Yeah, this is orangutans separated geographically. It's not like they could observe each other. Well, I don't know about orangutans, but the um, the mice definitely separated geographically. Yeah, yeah. that's what's odd about it. But uh, you know what I think, man? I don't think it's that they're learning. They learn it, and then it travels somehow through space. I think 
the evolution sort of grows through us. Do you know what I mean? Like it's our, it's it's something that's growing through humanity is are these new innovations. So it's not as though one orangutan figured it out and sent out a signal. It's as though this was just a new phase that was coming through this form of. That's biomass. very possible. But the orangutan initially, I, I, I I've confused these two stories pretty pretty badly. But the uh, the mice learned in separate parts of the world, separate parts of they weren't connected. Whether it's a uh, thousand miles or a hundred miles whatever it was but the orangutan were watching people and the orangutan started yeah. imitating people so they, they did directly imitate yeah. human beings but if you really stop and think about when human beings used to be essentially very similar to orangutans it was probably only like a couple of million years ago right that seems like a long time to us but in the span of the universe that ain't shit so yeah. the idea that a chimp could eventually if they kept moving along and slowly innovating and changing and finding magic mushrooms and <laughs> learning how to make fires with rocks. They yeah. could eventually become some kind of a human thing. I mean, we didn't used to be people. That's a fact. I mean, w pretty much established. It's not like all of a sudden we popped up in this form, you know, figuring out, holy uh, shit, we got to get away from leopards. <laughs> no, we, we, we became this, like, slowly and steadily. It's just the time frame for us is so bizarre to wrap our heads around with an 80-plus year lifespan to try to understand what a... 10 million year period of development is we can't really we can't get our head into that we don't we don't know what that means and 10 million years from now with this stuff when it gets to that weird exponential technology thing that's going on right now we're going to be unrecognizable 100 years from now sure yeah. well that's what i feel like lucas is getting at by creating an actual an a, a a pathway between two minds or between many minds that we can control using principles we already understand, I don't know intuition the way I know the way an electron's going to travel. I know the way an electron's going to travel. I don't, I don't get intuition that way. So if we can create chips where I can have something in the back of my head and I go like this and Lucas is like, stop scratching your arm because I feel it. Yeah. Like well, that's like, yeah, that's, yeah, like, that's an exponential start touching, <laughs> touching your butt. How about that? <laughs> like, You're sitting around your house all of a sudden. No, uh, Lucas, stop it! <laughs> no, <laughs> you're on a date. You're trying to keep it together. <laughs> <laughs> You, you could get hacked with that kind yeah, of technology. Could Somebody you. could hack into That seems you. inevitable. Just like you get, there's like, uh, someone hacked Twitter today, and I must have got a thousand, I'm not bullshitting, a thousand fake tweets about diet and exercise. Oh, wow, I look so good for summer because I started doing uh, this. Like those, those bots, like yeah. a bot got through and just infected Twitter. I think the benefit of having a bunch of people develop their own technologies. Because you're all for, infected together. Well, no, if you're developing your own technologies for your own implants, there's some sort of there's some sort of level of of security like some people use Macs cuz hey Macs don't get viruses the way PCs do because people who want to write viruses are targeting PCs cuz there's more PCs around I think that is a blinking oasis in the desert I don't think we're going to be able to stop <laughs> anything from getting hacked No I think Absolutely the idea not. that the, well first of all we've learned about the NSA and spying it's already shown that the, the, you can't you can't stop it. They've already got algorithms in place. They're already copying all your emails because of because of bottle bottleneck technology. Mm -hmm. Because because we can't invent our own internet. There's mm. we can only use that internet, and that internet goes through certain filters. You well, it's we also just, because these fucking corporations have given in to their overlords and given up the information. I mean, that's yeah, and that's I, really where it comes yeah, down I, to. I don't want to live. I don't want to live in a future where I've got artificial organs and all of the information from that is being pumped out to some who the fuck knows. I don't. I don't feel comfortable with that. I want. I want that information to belong to me at right. least, so that I can do with it with what I want. You know, I don't want any advertisements because my liver is doing whatever or I don't want right. people to be able to shut off my li my liver because I'm not being a good citizen. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. Can you imagine That's that? That's like an Ethan Hawke movie. <laughs> <laughs> There'd be no Snowden. Yeah, Snowden's we brain would have melted out of his nose by now. they just turn him off. Man, I'm sorry, yeah. you guys. i got to take a leak. Go ahead. Go take that a leak. That coconut water <laughs> crushes me every Go time. Go take a leak. Um, where where do you think the end game is when it comes to all this biohacking stuff? What's 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 the end game? Like, where do you hope that it all winds up? Do you have like a man? I hope by the time I'm X years old, I can fly. <laughs> I mean, is there is there something like that? I you can, you can go first. 
I see an end game as as something way larger than people screwing with their body. It's 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 a whole bunch of different technologies that are happening all at once, and the fact that we don't have enough resources on this planet to support the population growth and the amount of people that we do have and those sort of things add together. I feel like when you look at a company like SpaceX and what SpaceX is doing and and the fact that all these technologies are leading towards longer lives, uh, the guy who's doing Soylent, the uh, food substitute guy. Um, Methos Dudes. Methos yeah. Dudes in New York. Really awesome Fascinating guys. stuff. Yeah, isn't it? I drank it. I was like, what am I drinking? I don't know, dude. <laughs> and I think all that adds together. And I think that, you know, when we have so many people and we're living a longer time and we have the ability to print anything we can conceive, then maybe it's time for us to start moving out to space. Maybe it's time that we can handle 20 years over to somewhere where we'll be doing heavy construction work in zero G so that other people can come there and live and be smarter and move forward from there. Maybe it's time to start space colonization and space colonization. That's where we're going. It'd be Are we cool. We're going to be cyborgs. That would for be way some, easier. For if some, you could be yeah. like download your consciousness into a robot and send the robot into space. I, I right. honestly think Plastic that's, brain. that's the, the the smartest way to do it is to be a cyborg. If you're going into space, that's what I've been saying. Every, everything in space is is trying to kill any yeah. biological organism. Yeah. You can't. You know, uh, apes in a tin can won't cut it. I that's think. what I'm saying. Uh, and I think being able to withstand all of the crazy space weather. Space conditions. Yeah, the conditions are insane. I mean, the the temperature is instantly death if you step outside unless you have a pressured suit. If you get hit by any sort of a solar flare or asteroid, you're done. We're 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 too fragile even for this planet. That's why we've got like this stuff on us. Yeah. And I think motorcycle jackets and shit. Yeah. <laughs> the the idea of of uh, colonizing space as this, mm-hmm. I don't think it's 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 too dangerous. Do you foresee a future where we really do download our consciousness into some sort of an artificial human being? I I don't know. Uh, I don't know enough about the technology to say anything definite. I think that it's a cool idea, but I've never seen anything compelling. Compelling. Yeah. So I can't I can't really say. It's a mind fuck out, isn't it? <laughs> the idea of like a little you, a little Lucas running around made out of rubber and it's you, your consciousness is in this thing. It's out there touching things and moving stuff around. Yeah, and also that you could duplicate a Lucas. Like if you yeah. could download a Lucas, then your Lucas could end up on the on Pirate Bay. People could just be downloading you and then sending you pictures mm. of their Lucas that they've put in some kind of habit trail. But being- that, that would definitely be another. <laughs> that would be another Lucas, though, because once you start generating independent memories, I think you mm, you yeah. start having different emotions, different right. thoughts about things. Yeah, uh, that's going to be really weird. And when you we, have, yeah. unless they all interface somehow or another together. We which is yeah, which which I I mean it is possible, right? I mean if you're dealing with look, the the idea of sending someone a video or talking to someone through FaceTime or Skype in real time off your phone seems like the dumbest the craziest thing ever. Like that couldn't be possible. That wasn't even on Star Trek. Oh yeah. They never even figured that out on Star Trek. But it's real. The idea that you and your three clones or whatever they are could be experiencing life simultaneously and that you could multitask and that the the mind may evolve to concentrate on one person or the other these two sleep or these two are out you know and you're doing two different things at the same time and aware tuning into either one whatever you choose sort of like touching your leg with your left hand while you're writing something with your right hand it's going to be a problem, man. You're going to have swarms of individuals. There's going to be oh, Rogan yeah. swarms, like <laughs> well, like Genghis Khan. Like you know, Genghis Khan is responsible for like something like five percent of the population's DNA because they just you know he went on a party in spring in the 1200s and the whole world's never recovered. You know, hmm. imagine if you're doing that artificially. Well, when you talk that. about stuff that's that powerful, all of a sudden it becomes really important who has control of that technology in the initial. Right, 15 but how do you enforce that? How? It's a race. It's a race. Hold on a second. What? It's cough. What about him? It's a perfect opportunity to talk about it's cough because that's what he wants yes. to create. Right. Is this whole army. If you guys he wants to create an army. Well, yeah. not an army army, but a whole group of people. He does? They live forever. Um, did you uh, pay attention to the Global Future 2045 conference? Yeah, I know about the 2045 guys. 
what do you guys think about that? Um, I, I like that, uh, that they're working towards a, a solid project, uh, because that's kind of rare in the transhumanist community. There's just a lot of sci-fi talk. Uh, really? And way too much. Just way too, w- too much. much. That's funny. There's but, dis- discontent in the transhumanist community. But, <laughs> they're debating on how to handle this uh, correctly. This guy but, doesn't know what the fuck he's doing with his robots. <laughs> but uh, uh, I like I like the fact that they have a goal that they're working towards. I just I fear that uh, there will be a particular group of people that'll that'll get it and then just fuck us for eternity. And That's your big fear. Your big fear is someone else getting a hold of the goods first. And not, and not giving not, you the, I, the super chip. I, I fear about the type of people that'll that'll get it first because the the world didn't fare well when a particular people set of people got the gun first. That wasn't good for a lot of the human species. Well, uh, it was and, good for us though. <laughs> That's how you're here, dude. That's how you're sitting on the internet with a, a plastic microphone in front of you, sucked out of the I, earth, I would, converted from oil. I would rather <laughs> I would rather not have to move forward with that sort of contention and fighting and just pe- I don't I don't think Is moving- that inevitable? I mean, it, with enlightenment, I mean, we have it, w- 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 whether or not we've achieved enlightenment, we certainly haven't. But at the highest levels of humanity, I think people are probably more aware and tuned in today than at any other time in history. And it's probably way safer today than any other time yes. in history. Even though there's a lot of crazy shit that goes down on a regular basis, if you compared your everyday life to that of someone living in Siberia in the 1200s when the Mongols came storming in, yeah. we live a lot better. Yeah, It's pretty, pretty goddamn good. I, and I think that a big part of that is technology and the access to information. The access to information is freer than ever before. Technology more powerful than ever before. Hence, people are safer. And people are more moral. I really do believe that. And I think the idea of people being moral is more accepted as not just something that has to be enforced in order to keep the peace, but that's something that's beneficial and something that you should strive for. It's admirable. I think that that really might not have existed on such a mass scale in the past, even in the past 20 or 30 years. I think we're dealing with like pretty unprecedented times. And it sounds like really super you know, optimistic, but I feel like – one of the, th- the byproducts of this technology that we're all experiencing is that we're experiencing a sort of mini enlightenment mm-hmm. and a, 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 a burst of enlightenment because of this information. If that is the case, I think that this kind of technology that it sort of dissolves more boundary, I don't think it's going to lead to a constriction of the people that utilize it. I think it's going to lead to a, a freedom of the, the species itself. I really do believe that. I think that if I look at the, the trend, even though everybody wants to think the sky is falling, the trend doesn't indicate that. The, tr- the sky is falling for some people in some spots, and the apocalypse is right now if you're living in the Congo. If you're in Liberia, the apocalypse is today. That's Mad Max, right? That's going on right now. So, But the trend for us here, it's obviously not in that direction. I mean, it seems like there's always going to be a worst-case scenario on this planet, but that worst-case scenario is far better today than it's ever been in history. And the best-case scenario was completely non-existent, even in science fiction novels. It's going in that way. Can't stop it. Yeah, wait until one of these... One of these people invent a swarm of nanobots that goes flying out of their basement, devouring toddlers. I mean, the thing is, like, I, I like the I, toddlers. Let's I know, it's toddler, toddler is a fun word to say. No, that's your thing. You always go with dead baby. <laughs> but, but, but no, I, I think that when you're talking about this kind of stuff, you're you're talking about acceleration. Mm-hmm. I think you're talking about a technological acceleration, and wherever there's acceleration, there's an increased chance of hurting yourself if you're on a skateboard going a few miles per hour you're fine if you're on a skateboard going downhill you can wipe out well humanity is on this technological skateboard that's exponentially accelerating and in that way the role of the individual becomes more and more and more intense Mm. which means that with this kind of stuff when the individual has access to the kind of technology that they have today they can do a ton of damage look at what happened with those freaks all they needed was a pressure cooker and some ball bearings and they permanently yeah. ble- they killed so many people and traumatized so many others in the same way five years from now I mean, what happens with when people have access to this kind of I, stuff it is it is a, it, I, we, we are setting ourselves up but for the, you're talking I, I, about very unique 
in individual circumstances in comparison to the 7 billion people experiencing things completely differently all around the world. The problem is that you're dealing with 7 billion people that have access to the internet, or at least a, a good percentage of them, yes. and have their stories being told. So you're hearing about instances all over the world simultaneously all at once. We are not designed for that. We're designed to take in information from our lo local community. We're designed to take information from, oh, there's a band of dudes that are about a mile away on foot, and they're coming here to fuck our women. That's normal. That's what we're supposed to deal with. Yes. You're not supposed to deal with a story about a guy in Switzerland who fucked his pig to death. Right. You know, you know yeah. you're not supposed to deal with this <laughs> guy in Detroit that's got a, 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 a fake Bigfoot in his cooler yes. out back. I these are these are all you know. Th this is this is just you're dealing with so many human beings, an impossible number of seven billion, and you're getting information from right. a vast number of those people. So you're always going to get these freaks. You're always going to get, but it's still the trend, the overall trend, better. is way better than has ever existed. And, and I I agree with you there. I I my hope would be that we become more ethical before we get the power. To cause damage, so we, even though we're more ethical now, any ethical mishap at this point would be a lot more disastrous. It's not so bad when the most powerful weapon you have is a sword. Uh, yeah, but, well, that's not true because Genghis Khan killed well, seventy million people well, with a it horse and a help. sword and a lot of people, a lot of other dudes with him. But they did it with horses. Right, seventy million and, people over his lifetime with horses. But if he, the the scenario is. You have 3D printers, and let's imagine 3D printers in 200 years, where now you can like molecularly assemble stuff, and somewhere along those 200 years, someone discovered antimatter, right? So let's imagine that there's a way someone could create a, a antimatter that when it f met matter would dissolve the universe. Let's just say there's an imaginary technology that could open up and a... And you know what's, what's going to happen? A what? few people are going to die, and then it's going to force everyone to learn how to be really nice to everyone, because everyone can create a fucking antimatter bomb in their computer. That's what that's I hope. That's right. Yeah, that's what I that's hope. What I, hope. That's what I, I mean, they say a well-armed population is a polite population. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're going to take it to the complete but next level. Antimatter will be a, a bunch of country. black holes all throughout our planet that were created by assholes we're gonna have to hop over on our way to 7-eleven some, some, like, ah, there's a black hole over there oh thank you something <laughs> in transhumanism that people don't talk enough about i think is making people more ethical i think there's only talk of making people more capable and mm. more intelligent mm. that's interesting but there's no talk of making people nicer for the sake of just living in a, in a more sane world because we're nice now but what happens if infrastructure goes away and right. we become hungry again, and we've got lots of weapons around. Right. What happens? Yeah. And it would it would take a longer period to build back up mm -hmm. in this state rather than if we were nicer and had forethought instead of having hunger automatically take over and be like, well, fuck that guy. He has food. You know, we I think that we should start having a discussion about uh, making people more ethical uh, and and being able to empathize with even other species because – who knows? Uh, who knows what we will run into in the future, and that might be important. Well, that's interesting that you brought that up because that was something that Dmitry Itzkov actually touched on in uh, the conversation that I had with him, where he was talking about that being an important part of this whole movement, and that the movement wasn't just about achieving some new technological state; it's about elevating, uh, elevating humanity mm. as a whole overall. And I, I thought that was really interesting that he is taking that into consideration. That's one of the reasons why in this global future 2045, um, that's what it was, right? Global future yes. 2045 uh, conference that he had, he brought in a lot of religious and spiritual leaders to sort of ask some questions of these different faiths to try to get an understanding of what their philosophies were and how they would incorporate this sort of new impending technology, this transhumanism idea had it were it to come to fruition it was really pretty fascinating stuff i mean he didn't just take it from the technological standpoint yeah. it's cough really delve he dove into the uh psychological and the spiritual aspects of it as well which i thought was uh unique and admirable and probably pretty important if this thing moves further I mean, you're going to have some real ethical questions you develop immortal cyber beings with skin made out of spiderweb silk that's bulletproof I mean, there's already that's the, trans, coming. the transhuman yeah. Mormon. They've already they already figured out how to do that, right? Yeah, the the transhumanist Mormon. Associate. What? What? Yeah, yeah. What did you just say? Yeah, yeah that's that's, that's, that's a real that's a real thing. It's like saying gays for Jesus. <laughs> yeah, there's that's uh, hilarious. There's, transhumanist Mormonism. 
Yeah, oh there's there's a subset of the Mormon community. The problem is, if you're willing to be a Mormon, you're fucking willing to be anything. It's just a matter of who rings your doorbell first. You know, <laughs> it's like just sit them down, talk them into anything. You're a Mormon. You believe a 14 year old named Joseph Smith in 1820 found golden tablets that contained the lost work of Jesus, yeah. and only he could read them because he had a magic rock. No wonder why they're afraid of gay marriage. You feel me? Because if someone can talk you into being a Mormon, they can talk you into blowing them too. <laughs> That's the joke. You get it? It's right out of my stand up, god damn it. You got me doing my own material. God. You uh, the uh, you're a part of a movement right now. Um whether you call it grinders or transhumanism or whatever, you're a part of a movement where you're focusing on a very specific thing. You're focusing on incorporating technology into the body to improve the body. And as long as you're focusing on that, as long as there's a whole community focusing on that, whether or not now it's just magnets in the fingers and everybody's poo-pooing it and saying, what's the big deal? It's going to come a time where it's a lot more than that. Whether it's some new invention of something that has absolutely no uh, w- rejection in the human body so you can add all kinds of things. Whether that it, some new technology comes along that radically enhances perception, whether it's visual or hearing or thinking, cognitive function, the ability to read each other's minds as long as you both have the chip. It's all going to happen, right? Like, you can't text message someone who doesn't have a phone, okay? Yeah. But if they have a phone, you can text them pretty easy. And once yeah. we all have something like that in our head, and it's like, your phone will work with your friend's phones. OMG, I'm looking at you right now, and I'm <laughs> writing this down. You know, there's going to be those moments where we, we hit some next level thing that we didn't see coming. Just like we didn't see the internet coming, we didn't see cell phones coming. No one saw that shit coming. Again, even Star Trek, they had yeah. a fucking walkie-talkie, man. <laughs> Kirk out. <laughs> You had to like say that and shut it. <laughs> you had to flip it open. It's so stupid. They didn't see iPads. They didn't see any of that shit. And you guys are right on the crest of the wave, right on the crest of the <laughs> technological tsunami, getting sucked into the singularity. As we're all getting torn towards that waterfall, you guys are in the canoes at the very front. How far would you be willing to take it? If someone came off with some real Steve Austin, $6 million man, arms and legs, they just had to saw your shit off and put on some new ones, would you be down? If you knew, if they were like a whole bunch, it was like fake tits, where everybody was doing it. If it got to that point. I because, think if you know, everyone fake- was doing it, We'd all do it. Yeah. He came up to like a woman in the 1800s. Or he came up to a pilgrim or something and said, listen, I like, I like what you look like, but I'm thinking maybe some bags of water surgically implanted under your breasts would, you know, you get a lot more attention around Zip the town. bags, soup. <laughs> they didn't even have bags. They didn't have plastic. But they would think you're fucking crazy. Are we going to think, I mean, is that us looking at the future about like it's going to be standard? Like you still have your arms and legs? Oh, my God, girl. What are you uh, wh- doing? What, what is that? Yeah, that, that'll be the end of rape. Everybody's just a fucking super robot. It'll be the new retro thing, though, to have everybody arms. Everybody can fight off everybody. Yeah, I think that yeah, retro. It, becomes, <laughs> it becomes an expression of yourself, kind of the way that body modification is already. Yeah. You know, I, why would I replace perfectly good arms and legs when I could have extra or maybe extra. something yes. something now extra. Now you're greedy. See, you greedy motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to give you a super body like, how about I have a three dicks? <laughs> but by the way, man, you got Forearms. it. Forearms. Forearms would be great. If we... Shiva. Maybe that's what Shiva's all about. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that is the future. Shiva's a futuristic Holy robot. Holy shit, I never even thought of that. Maybe that's what that was all about. Some crazy transhumanist from the past. Maybe they figured it out a long time ago and then just barely wrote it down. They were so high. They, they, they wrote it down like... There was a few passages sure. in the Bhagavad Gita and then went back to eating <laughs> mushrooms. Like, Hold on, six arms? Is that what it says? Here? <laughs> but I do like that you asked somebody who has magnets under his hands if he would replace his arms with robot arms. The answer of is yes. Of course. You would do it in a second. Even, even if no one else was but doing it. But what if you it? couldn't yeah. enjoy like foot massages anymore? Would you replace your legs if they were just numb? They were numb but awesome, like jumping over buildings, running 60 miles an hour. But you, they were numb. You know, you don't feel a good massage. Are you saying no, that if you I had to pick between enjoying foot massage? Girl grabs massage? your butt, you feel nothing. No, I, don't, I don't think it has to be a, uh, a trade-off. It might think. have to be. But I, if you keep your cock and balls, but the bottom of your sack is numb. The only, the only way you feel your balls is if someone squeezes them. But the legs on down, fake as fuck, super powerful, pistons and, you know, nuclear power, jumping so wait, over you're, trees. you're saying I could jump over trees, but mm-hmm. my balls are numb? Only the bottom. The bottom of your balls are I numb. I take numb balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shit. 
I'll take all the way to the top. Would, you, would you think you would be willing to go through an operation that removes your legs? I mean, what if they get operations like, look, a long time ago, just something like a fake tit, would, you'd probably die. If someone tried to do that right. to you, you would die just from the fact they didn't know how to sterilize you. You didn't have any way of putting you under. Sure. It, was, it would be nothing today. But back then, it was a serious, serious thing. Today, girls go back to work in a couple of days. Right. The idea, I don't know why I keep going back to fake tits. I'm trying to find a, a non-sexist <laughs> way of approaching this as far as male enhancement, but I can't find anything that's as standard as the craziness of male, sure. you know, a female right. breast enhancement. It's one of the weirdest things human beings do. But to try to, if we get to some point where amputating legs is like nothing yes. and replacing it with an artificial one, but super powered... I- think that the difference between a breast implant and fake leg, right, is that already my knees are given out. Already my my legs are going okay. to wear out. Stop right there. Have Probably. you ever seen a chick that's had three tits three kids rather? Have you ever seen a chick's tits <laughs> who's had three kids? <laughs> Everything wears out, man. We're made out of flesh. Right. It would have been way better if I said it smoother. Yeah. That was a missed opportunity. Wait, say it again. We, I stumbled. No, it's too late. We do wear out. You're totally right. There's nothing different between those two, but we wear out. Yeah. We do. Eventually, your choice might be shitty legs or better legs. That or maybe they fix, fix the um, undersack. And you know, come yeah. up with some new technology that even though the undersack is artificial, it has sensors and it sends it. I would but just I'm, like I'm everybody sure. here to stop pretending that if they had super powerful robot legs, <laughs> you wouldn't get your legs amputated and replaced <laughs> by super. But I wouldn't be. What about the fact that they're numb? That's a weird well, thing, man. I would want someone to do it. You're for a few jumping decades. over Pe- trees. People are already working mm, on on prosthetics point. that that you know that, that interface. Yeah, that feel. Mm. Yes. People are already and and we're working towards uh, more sensitive prosthetics so that you can mm. feel more. Right, and you can. Pretty soon, I'm hoping that you can even dial it so that if you're going to do something dangerous or painful, you can dial the pain down, yeah. mm. whatever. It becomes optional. At we, that point, it why would you keep these? These aren't modular. You can't switch them. They don't rotate. Yeah. Why? Why would you? Why? Because they feel good when you hold someone's hands. But you can, you can always put over a, a layer of, of soft stuff. Why not just pretend you're alive and jump off a bridge? I mean, it's at what point in time do we end this? Okay, your 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 whole body is going to be this fake robot body, and you're going to take what is the memories of your life and your consciousness and download them into some computer chip, and the the you rots, and this dream you goes wandering around till yeah. your batteries run out. Yes, thinking you're really living on a farm with the Waltons. Meanwhile, you're a stupid thing with a battery. You don't even know what the fuck's going on with your meanwhile, life. Meanwhile, you're some you're like holding hands on the beach and getting foot <laughs> massages while all of us are bounding through the universe, jumping over buildings. <laughs> well, I'm just playing devil's advocate, but there always are those people that want to hold everything back and go, what like those those assholes that we were listening to. Science has yet to explain how a seed becomes a beautiful flower. Uh, and the sp- oh, yeah, yes, actually, it has, yeah. dummy. <laughs> you know, we were listening to these, some of these religious people talking at that conference were just like, their, their, their ideas were so stupid and antiquated, yeah. clinging on to the, the mysteries that have already been solved. Right. But in what we were talking about before, those mysteries that have been solved, when we do understand the mechanism behind a seed becoming a flower, make it even more fascinating. Yeah. Yes. Because even though we understand the process now it's still wow that's cool before it used to be oh wow that flower is beautiful what a mystery i am so glad god brought this to my life now we're like isn't this incredible this yeah. seed it got oxygen and then minerals from the soil and then it converts it into energy and then there's photosynthesis and then it grows and then the flowers blooms this is insane it's like the whole process behind it is like it's like so mind-boggling and enriching like and as a human being that's one of the things that like really jazzes us up when we learn new shit when we discover new shit it's part of like the like when you tell someone something go whoa that's cool like we were talking earlier today about this um this discovery these uh, scientists uh, in uh, Germany and um, in Germany and America, uh, they have discovered um, this new type of animal that used to be like a, an ancestor of the human being that's from 41,000 years ago. They thought it might be a Neanderthal. They thought it might be a Homo sapien. And it turned out to be some new thing that they didn't even know existed. It's called, they're calling it a Denisovan based on where they found yeah, it. Right. And when we were talking about it before. We were all like, whoa, cool, <laughs> whoa. Like, 
there's a there's a th- part of learning something new and discovering something new that just jazzes us up. Yeah, and that that's one of the things that brought me to transhumanism the the desire to see the Milky Way. I mean, learning that we didn't live we couldn't live long enough to explore the galaxy was just to me as a kid was just. Devastating. Really, yeah, it was it was, <laughs> yeah. it was devastating because that's when like, you know you're a super geek. Because <laughs> like you know, I I grew up watching like Star Wars and and you know, watching Doctor Who, and then finding out that we're too fragile and we don't live long enough to see anything. It's like we can't. W- what we do is we say, "What's over that hill? What's over that mountain? Let's go." Right. I know it's dangerous, but hey, there's nothing else to do. Let's do it. And the fact that we we can't cross space because. Where there's too much radiation, or there's you'll develop wrong, or whatever. That to me, that was dev- devastating and unacceptable. And I think that that that's just w- what other option is there but to move forward. That's so funny that y- devastating, unacceptable. Do you, you heard about the? Um, there's a gentleman at the University of Connecticut that's the foremost scientist uh, working on time travel. Roy Mallet, I believe is it Ray Mallet. I forget. I forget his name. Um, but he's a professor, and he started his work on time travel because his father died when he was a young man, and he wanted to go back in time to save his father. So this guy, he's like a goddamn character in a comic book. He's like right. a character in a Spider-Man book, and he's been working on time travel to go back in time and save his father. Cool. That, but it's those those things like where you're like I can't imagine that I'm living in a world where I won't get to fly in a Battlestar Galactica yeah. ship and fight the Cylons. This <laughs> I, is ridiculous. I think that's what's beautiful <laughs> oh, about yeah. transhumanism is that it has the impulse within it is the same impulse that got people to go onto ships to sail towards a continent that they'd kind of heard about. At the ri- risking everything with no food, probably going to die. Maybe the earth just ends. I think there's something beautiful about what you guys are doing, even though I do see it as a kind of self-destructive act. I think when you put magnets under your fingers, you you aren't thinking ahead. You aren't thinking about what you're going to be like in 30 years. You know, you don't know. You could says be- the dude who used to have a nose ring for like oh. a t- three days. And I didn't get the nose it ring. Infected and almost killed you, you the, self-destructive bastard. The impulse that, to get me the nose ring was not the same impulse that drove explorers through the sea. It was just being dumb and high in Venice Beach. There's no glory to it. What these guys are doing is glorious. It's really cool. It's just a kind of low. It's a. You have to start somewhere. You yeah. know, you got to you got to start somewhere. You're starting with magnets in your fingers. But by the way, if anybody's listening to this, the uh, the the scientist was Ronald Mallet, Ronald L. Mallet, M A L L E T T, from the Ph. He's a PhD at the University of Connecticut. Would, would you like to meet Dmitry Itzkov, the man who founded the Global Future 2045 conference? And if so, what would you uh, ask him? You first, please. What would I ask him? <laughs> I I would ask him. Uh, or what would you say to him? I mean, it doesn't even have to be a question. Do, would you Would you have anything specific that you would want to talk to him about? I would actually ask him what his uh, what his vision of the future is. If it If it all pans out perfectly in his view, what would it look like? Because I'm I'm very interested in what his utopia is. I'd love to, I'd actually love to meet him. What about you? Would you ask him? I'd like to meet him. I'd like to know what he thinks about where we're going as as a whole, as a group of people who are experimenting with ourselves and, and doing this stuff. And I would ask him for the resources that we don't have. When you talk about how um, – putting a magnet inside yourself you can't think about the long term well it's not that we haven't it's that the people we talk to who are professionals in these fields they can't risk telling us the answers because they have professional certification boards that would say hey you're behaving unethically you're telling someone to do something harmful to themselves and they don't know the risks they're taking we're yanking your license and so we don't get answers to questions that we need and I think a guy like Itzkoff could probably put us in touch with a lot of people who would have a lot of answers for things that could really help us out. Awesome. Dudes, thank you very much. Really fun conversation, uh, really interesting stuff, fantastic subject, and uh, 
thanks for doing what you do and thanks for sharing your information as well and thanks uh, for having us you guys have a great attitude about all this technology too and uh even though i play devil's advocate about it i i really think that ultimately that would be the best way you know if all if we all had access but the problem is you know people are weak bitches i'll tell you (laughs) (laughs) grindhouse wetware ladies and gentlemen this podcast would not come to a conclusion good night